Hello everyone. I am Visa Parvianen and I'm from Ethico. Today we take a look at combining Atlassian Jira, the Jenkins CI server and OWASP Z attack proxy to create an automatic security issue detection pipeline. Uh, in the previous blog post we took a look at using Jenkins to run Zap uh, for getting security reports on software. Uh, there is a problem with this uh, automatic continuous uh, security testing is that uh, we do get uh, a nice report from Zap, but uh, every time we get the report it contains all of the findings available for Zap. Uh, and in some cases, or most cases even, not all of these findings are actionable within the scope of the software. Uh, there should be always a active decision, a conscious decision on whether to act on these security findings or not, and this this decision should be recorded somewhere in some shape or form. Now, uh, at Efficode we actually offer uh, a lot of these uh, centralized software production environments uh, and uh, Jira is a very common way of managing all of the tasks involved in any kind of software production activity. Uh, and in these environments we also often use Jenkins and also often Zap, uh, but not always do we combine these together. And today we'll take a look at how to do just that. Uh, in this tutorial we will create uh, a virtual network with two services. Uh, there will be Jira and Jenkins in virtual machine containers and a private network which combines them. This unfortunately requires a pretty powerful computer. Uh, working comfortably with this setup will require at least 6 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, while it is possible to do, do it with four, it will frustrate you to know and don't do it. Uh, you should al also be aware that we will be using a few IP spaces uh, in the 192.168 block. Uh, if you should check with your network administrator first, if you're in a corporate network, if those IPs are free, and if not, which IPs you can use for this test. Uh, you can find these IPs in the Vagrant file. Most of the time you will not need to worry about it. But uh, if you're in a corporate network, please do take a look. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is install a few prerequisites. I will copy the commands and package names from here. Uh, don't worry, there will be uh, a listing of all of the commands used uh, in the video description. So first, let's install a few packages. Uh, we'll be installing VirtualBox, Vagrant, uh, some uh, VirtualBox related tools, the Git version control system, uh, the VI improved uh, text editor and Ansible. I will not actually upgrade Ansible on this machine because I do still have some uh, Ansible 1.9 uh, 1.9 related projects on this machine uh, and if I upgrade it now to 2.0 those will stop working. This particular project however will work with both uh, Ansible 1.9 and 2.0 so don't worry it doesn't matter which you get. Uh, if you don't have Ansible already I do suggest uh, using the most recent. So next up, let's clone a Git repository for us. Uh, this is in GitHub. Normally at Ethicode we do use Devio, uh, which is a bit more enterprise-oriented oriented version control management system. However, that doesn't offer, offer us uh, the possibility, possibility of, of having public publicly available repositories, so in these kinds of tutorials we are stuck with GitHub. Now that we have the repository, let's go there. It's called Jira Jenkins. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, one of them is called a Vagrant file. Uh, let's take a look at that real quickly. Uh, here we go. So. Uh, here we have a few interesting things. We have the IP addresses I mentioned. We have uh, 192.168.5.100 and 101 uh, in use. Also another interesting thing is uh, the RAM allocation for each of these services. Jira requires at least 2 gigs of RAM. 
uh, it just will not start with anything less uh, and uh, in Jenkins case uh, one gig is fine. Uh, then uh, we have both of these services defined here. We have some forwarded ports so that these will actually appear. The uh, client machines or guest machines will actually show up uh, as having ports on your, your host machine, the one that you're working with. Uh, the Atlassian service or Jira will be simply provisioned but with a simple script which will install Jira. Uh, fortunately Atlassian has actually made this very easy for us. Uh, as for Jenkins, we actually have uh, a, an Ansible deployment script uh, which will be run. It's in Jenkins YML file. Uh, you can take a look at those. They're not kind of the core focus, focus of this, uh, this tutorial. All right, now let's uh, start. Go ahead and start the services. We'll go Vagrant up. And now we wait. Now, I have already downloaded the base box on my computer before, so it doesn't take very long. In your case, you may look at uh, something like half an hour download time if you have a bit of a slow connection. Uh, so definitely don't try to do this uh, on a cell phone, cell phone, cell phone or mobile, mobile connection if you have a metered, metered connection, because this will, this will download quite a bit of quite a bit of files uh, in the form of the virtual machine image. In my case that shouldn't take too long, uh, only a couple of minutes, but I will not waste your time by having you watch that, so let's pause the video for a while. Now we have completed the installation. Uh, sometimes there is a bit of a hitch in the Jenkins startup sequence. Uh, there is a timeout during which uh, the system keeps checking if Jenkins has started and if you have a lot of processes running or the virtual machine decides to be a bit slow, this may not happen in time. However, this is easily fixed by simply running uh, the Jenkins server provisioning command again. So the way to do it is to per first run uh, Vagrant Halt uh, to stop the server and then to start uh, it up again with the provisioning, just run vagrant up uh, dash dash provision Jenkins. Uh, basically all of the vagrant commands can be scoped like this, so that if you uh, give the name of the machine you wish to, wish to interact with as the last part of the command, it will be scoped to that machine only. Uh, in our case, the names of these machines are Jira and Jenkins, uh, respectively, so uh, they should be pretty easy to figure out. Okay, uh, let's go to Jira now. So this is what you get when you open a uh, local host uh, on port 8081. So this is where we bound, bound Jira in the Vagrant file. And uh, we have two options here. Uh, we can have uh, Jira automatically set up, or we can... Uh, we can set this thing up ourselves. Uh, we're gonna choose uh, the set it up for me option now, but this is only recommended for uh, these uh, demonstration and training environments. Do not install uh, Jira with the default settings uh, to any kind of production environment. The most important reason is the server, so you will want to have something besides the default uh, default server, uh, database server uh, running for any production environment. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a chore to migrate them uh, from one to the other, so whenever you're doing a production installation, make sure to do it uh, the proper way. Uh, now we will continue to My Atlassian, where we will have to generate a license for Jira. Uh, fortunately, uh, fortunately, Atlassian provides a way for us to get very easily uh, a, an evaluation license, so uh, we're going to generate one. Uh, uh, just a moment, I will log in with my credentials. And now a simple Google login later, we are headed for the creation of our very own 
license for Atlassian. Uh, these are all basically correct. We already have the server up and running. We uh, put in some name of our of our company. Uh, the product we want to have is uh, Jira Software Server. Uh, there's a bunch of other options uh, options as well, but we won't go into those right now. The server ID you can just keep. Click Generate License. Uh, and then they just want to make sure that this is the URL you want to be using with the server. In this case, that's of course localhost because we're just testing. That's all right. Continue. And now we're back on our own personal Jira server running in the virtual machine, uh, setting up the administrator account. Uh, I'll just input some of this data here. Uh, and I'll just uh, create a admin admin user. So uh, please be sure to remember those credentials, even though Jira will automatically log us in in the next step. Uh, it is going to be needed uh, in a moment when we start setting up Jenkins. Now again, this will take a while. Uh, Jira will finalize the setup for us in the background. Uh, the plugin system being the most uh, most complicated thing here. Uh, in the meanwhile, let's take a look at how Jenkins is doing. Uh, here in Jenkins, uh, we have to unlock Jenkins uh, by using the uh, the administration password. Uh, for that, we will need to open an SSH connection to the virtual box where Jenkins is running. So uh, Vagrant. SSH and then name of machine, in this case Jenkins. Enter. And then just a few seconds later we have uh, have uh, the SSH connection open. Uh, then sudo cat and then this path right here where Jenkins has uh, saved the initial administration password. You will need to use, use sudo uh, to cut this because it is a protected file. Uh, here we go. Copy that into here and hit continue. Now we'll just wait a moment uh, as the Jenkins setup wizard initializes. Uh, this has a similar uh, automatic setup system to, to Jira. Uh, we are going to need more plugins than the initial uh, installation will will install for us for Jenkins. However, not all of those plugins are available at this phase in Jenkins installation. So we're just going to let it install the recommended plugins. Uh, and this will again take a moment so we can go back uh, to to set up Jira. Let's get started. Now we get to select uh, the language. You can, of course, select something besides English. Uh, but I suggest in this case, at least you use English because that's what I'm going to use. And it will be a bit difficult to follow along if you have a different language set up. Here we go. Uh, we're not going to choose an avatar. We're also going to skip the quick tour. Uh, it is pretty nifty, but we're not going to be needing that right now. Uh, now let's create a project uh, and give it a name. So, epic code secops demo. Uh, so here we go. Uh, you should remember also the space key you gave to this project. It will be uh, the thing which we'll use in Jenkins to target uh, the tickets that we create automatically to the right project. Let's create that. The name doesn't really matter. Matter in any case, it's just something for us humans to to recognize. Recognize when there is more than one project in the system. Uh, here's the Jira board. There's uh, nothing here. You can basically ignore these uh, these warnings. This is just the uh, warning for for the default time zone, uh, which which should be changed. Uh, in case you're using a production environment, uh, we can uh, keep the feedback feedback system on. It's always nice to provide software renders with some data on how people are using their things, uh, because then the most important features 
uh, get developed and the most important bugs fixed. Okay, let's go back to uh, the Jenkins setup side. So Jenkins has now in the background completed uh, the installation of the basic plugins uh, and now they want us to create an admin user. I'll just call it admin, password admin, confirm password also admin, admin and here we go. We will finish that. And now Jenkins setup is completed. Uh, we will need to do quite a bit of more setting up for Jenkins to get it to do what we want. Uh, we're not even going to create new jobs right now. We're going to go manage Jenkins uh, and then manage some plugins. Uh, at this point, there's actually much more available plugins. So notice that there's these tabs here uh, where you can select select different types of uh, filters for the plugin list. We're going to look in the available plugins for ZA proxy plugin. And there's actually two. There's OWASP ZAP plugin and ZA proxy plugin. They basically do the, the same thing, which is to integrate uh, ZAP or the OWASP ZAP uh, attack proxy with Jenkins. However, uh, the ZA proxy plugin is much more full featured and uh, uh, the OWASP ZAP plugin is very basic uh, and only this one includes the Jira integration capability which we are after today. So we'll install that without restarting. It shouldn't take very long. Uh, and here you can actually see all of the all of the other plugins which have been recently installed. ZA proxy plugin is uh, installed. Let's go back because we will need another plugin also. Uh, and that's called the custom tools plugin which is used to install external tools uh, for Jenkins. Some of the plugins actually need a Jenkins restart uh, restarts uh, after installation. However, these ones don't. So we can we can simply use the non restarting version of the installation. Uh, now custom tools is installed. Uh, then let us go to manage Jenkins again. And in this instance, we will be uh, going to global tool configuration, where we want to add a new custom tool called Zap. And uh, we don't need any labels, but we do need the URL for the installation, which we have here. Uh, remember, if you uh, try to use a different version of Zap or something, uh, always to use the protocol name in the beginning of any URLs you input into into uh, Jenkins. Jenkins is very particular about that, and it doesn't give you most often any errors. If you don't, it will simply fail at some uh, unspecified time. Uh, now, inside this archive, there is a folder. Uh, called zap243, which is the, uh, the archive uh, from where we want to, where we want to install zap. Uh, and now we're done. Let's save. And now we can actually go and create a new job for Jenkins. Uh, let's call it if you code secops demo. Uh, it's a freestyle project. Click OK here and the new job will be created. Uh, the description and, and most of these are uh, either not necessary or optional. Uh, however, I think it is nice to have the discard old builds on and let's say keep 10 old builds just to make sure that your CI server doesn't get cluttered if you want to use it for something else especially. Um, uh, 10 may not be the right number for you, but of course, feel free to choose. Uh, we do have source code management uh, and we use again GitHub here. We have this demo application, Git address, which we'll use here. You will not need any kind of credentials for this one. 
and uh, we don't we will not be putting in any build triggers the build triggers mean basically uh, define when this build will be done uh, for these security related tests I think you should not include the security tests in in all of the normal uh, normal application tests that you will done uh, these or, or will be doing uh, these are not something that you need to run uh, at every commit uh, instead you could uh, put a uh, build periodically here and set it up uh, to to build these tests for example every night so uh, because because the analysis of these results always takes a bit of time it requires a human interaction we don't want to to have the uh, build break just because there is a new low priority uh, security item in the list but uh, once once a day uh, even once a week depending on your your release schedule should be should now that be fine. we have the version control system set up let's do a few build items uh, we will execute some shell commands uh, the first of which is a simple startup sh so startup sh is a little shell script which exists uh, in the repository uh, then we need another uh, which will kill uh, the server after we have completed the build uh, and finally a third one we could combine these but are there are there separate uh, we will remove the server PID file uh, so there won't be any conflicts next time. Uh, now we can build this once uh, and we need to build this uh, project once before we start configuring ZAP because in the ZAP configuration we will need one file which exists in the repository. Uh, uh, let's see, we have some kind of error here. Uh, let's take a look at the console output. And startup sh is not found. Well, that's no surprise because it's actually start.sh. So. Uh, if there are any problems, usually you can figure things out uh, with the console output that is provided by Jenkins. Let's try the build again. Yep, now everything should be fine. Alright then, uh, let's do a few final configuration pieces for Zap. We will go to Configure System. And there's a whole bunch of, of options here. Uh, one of them be, will be related to ZA proxy. Uh, now, ZA, this here is a, an exception to ZA proxy. You don't need to put the protocol here uh, because it's a proxy. Uh, we'll use 9999 as the default, uh, default port. And here we will put the Jira IP address. Now, please make sure uh, if you have changed changed the uh, address uh, of the Jira server or the IP address in the Vagrant file, you will also have to have to use the one you used over there. Uh, in any kind of production system, obviously you would want to use something besides. Uh, especially the admin account, but also something besides the uh, a uh, human's account, so some kind of integration account, uh, which is available uh, available in, in Jira to, to do this. So now we have the ZA proxy set up, should be correct. And let's go and finalize the configuration in here, now that we also have the contents of the demo application. We'll add a new build step, uh, execute ZA proxy. That's actually, there's a lot of stuff to configure here. 
Uh, let's, as a first step, move this between the start and kill commands, uh, because obviously we want the application to be on when it is being tested. Uh, then we have all of these settings here, uh, and he this is the most important one. We want to have the ZA proxy installation, which we which we did with the custom tools plugin selected here. We gave it the name Zap, and it's already pre-selected, so we can use that. Then we want to load an existing session. Now the sessions uh, are something uh, which can be created uh, with Zap. Uh, in a number of different ways. The way I did this one was by using Zap in the uh, desktop mode, so as a desktop application on my own computer against the same software. And basically what we do with Zap is uh, we interact with the software that we want to test uh, so that all of the interactions uh, go through Zap. And Zap makes a record of all of those interactions and then uh, turns them into into evil things. So uh, there are several ways uh, of, of coming up with these sessions. Uh, I use the very easy way, a, a little bit more advanced way of doing the same thing uh, would be to run, for example, robot framework integration tests through the Zap proxy and then save that session for further use. Uh, in this case, we will simply simply use the saved session. It's uh, very easy. And the application is running in port 7272 on the Jenkins machine uh, in, again, a production environment. You might have it running somewhere else, hopefully in some kind of uh, automatically spooling uh, or automatically provisioned container system. But uh, in our case, uh, this is what we'll use. Uh, we will spider the URL uh, and we will do an unauthenticated scan. There's actually a bit more more integrations uh, or interactions in the uh, profile. You can take a look at this by uh, by checking out the Git repository to your own uh, own computer, uh, downloading Zap and opening the session files. Everything that Zap needs should be there. Now let's save this one. And now, if we build this, we should be able to get a uh, a build result which also contains some security-related things. Let's run the build now. And now we can see the fourth one was a success. Uh, so it, the first run with Zap takes a little bit of time because the custom tools plugin will not actually uh, run the Zap installation and unpack all of these things before you run this tool for the first time. Uh, there is one thing where we made a mistake, which is that if we take a look at the uh, results of this build, there is actually no security stuff here whatsoever. Uh, and I think I know what's wrong. We actually forgot to archive the results. Now, uh, in here, let's add uh, generate report and out dot. So now it should have an out something. So out dot XML and out dot HTML, and then we will archive the artifacts out dot star and it may give us an uh, error that out doesn't match anything but let's move on nevertheless doesn't know that these kinds of things exist yet but they soon will running the build again and now in the results page we can actually see we have out.html and out.xml. The XML file con contains this uh, structured representation for machine uh, reading of the results. And uh, here's the, the uh, human readable HTML version. Uh, this is pretty nice because, uh, zoom in a little bit so that you can see, uh, there is a number of things here. Uh, it will tell uh, in which uh, areas of the application we encountered these problems uh, in this case 
the X-Frame Options header is not set, uh, XSS per, uh, Protection is not enabled, and so on and so forth. So now we have completed setting up Zap and Jenkins. Now all that remains is to connect uh, what we have to Jira. Uh, unfortunately, this is a bit more tricky than it needs to be, uh, mostly because there is uh, an unusual bug with the Jira uh, uh, Jira connection. But uh, on to that in just a bit. Uh, first, we need to check this uh, create Jira issues and then input the Jira project key. That was SEC demo. Uh, and assignee, since we only have one user, is admin. Now we want to export whoops, all kinds of alerts uh, that we have. Let's zoom back down, so maybe stop it from jumping. Uh, there we go. Now, theoretically, we're done, uh, and, and uh, Jira should start receiving these, uh, let's see what happens. Now, ostensibly, this uh, build is a success. Uh, however, let's see if we have anything here in Jira. Unfortunately, not. So we don't have don't have anything uh, anywhere in here. So not in uh, any of the backlog views or uh, any of the other views. If we check issues on here. It should show us all of the issues. Uh, we still get nothing. Uh, and again, let's. Oops. Uh, look at some clues from the console output. Mm, here. It's giving us some errors, and I wonder why that is. Uh, it turns out uh, there is a configuration file which should be created in the Jenkins server, but for some reason uh, isn't. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do that manually. So this is related to the Jira global configuration for Zap, uh, or the yeah, Zap, and the extension of uh, of Jenkins, which is uh, communicating with Jira. So let's go to the Jenkins server. And then by default we will be logging in as the Vagrant user, but as Jenkins is uh, being run as the Jenkins user, we go to the Jenkins user, and now we are in the Jenkins user home folder, uh, which contains this zap uh, directory. And in this directory we should have, but don't, uh, this properties file which defines the credentials to be used with Jira. So, we will add that, and uh, as it happens, I have encountered this before. So there is an existing existing uh, uh, file already in the repository, which we can download here. Uh, and let's take a look at the cred.properties file. And this has uh, the Jira username, uh, the Jira uh, admin, Password or, or the Jira password and uh, the IP address and port where Jira is running. Now we can actually generate this, uh, these with the uh, desktop version of Zap, uh, which is what I did, uh, but you can also simply change this with any uh, text editor, for example. And uh, after this, what we will do is uh, We start Jenkins. There we go. And let's go to the Jenkins main page. It should have us log in again, probably. 
Yeah, it will take a little while. Oh, so quick. No need to. Oh. Let's also use the password. And now, let's try building again. Now, at least in my case, uh, this didn't yet work. Uh, let's take a look at the console output again. Uh, and uh, we can see that it's trying to load uh, Zap, uh, and it does add the ZA proxy uh, plugin. Uh, but then, when it tries to send stuff to Jira, there is uh, no implementer error. In here, and this arises from the fact that, uh, for whatever reason, the Zap uh, Jira issue creator plugin was not automatically installed. Fortunately, it's pretty easy for us to find out uh, where we should put it. So here we can see uh, where Zap is hanging out, uh, and we'll just go there. And in here uh, we have the plugin directory uh, in which we can wget the correct extension. The URL is here. It's uh, in GitHub. Uh, don't worry, you can copy all of that uh, over to uh, a wget command. In my case, I just did that. So if we look at this here, we have the Jira issue creator alpha1.zap. Uh, and now, if we run through the build, uh, we can see that all of these issues are created in Jira. And in Jira, of course, you can have a number of different types of workflows for these. Uh, I suggest having at least uh, a few different states uh, in uh, or resolutions for these. Uh, some of them should be or, or can be marked won't fix if it's not relevant in the context of the application. Uh, and this way you can see who has decided that these security issues will be fixed or, or won't be fixed and, and when they have first appeared and so on and so forth uh, so that you can have a peace of mind in your, uh, in your application development. Uh, that's all. Uh, as I said, uh, we have quite commonly seen these these tools being used in large-scale deployments of, uh, of software production to tools. Uh, if you'd like to hear more, head on over to the Efficode blog. And you're, of course, welcome to send me or other people uh, at Efficode either email or shout to us at Twitter. Uh, and my email address, uh, actually, you probably saw it, it's visa.parviainen, so first name, dot last name, at Efficode.com. Uh, be in touch and thank you for watching.